So we're back on talking this week all about my journey with 75 Hard. Um, just a quick update what 75 Hard is. It's a mental toughness challenge. And um, what that is, is I have to drink a gallon of water, work out twice a day, once outside, no matter the weather, read 10 pages of a book, take a progress pic, no drinking, and stick to a strict diet. And so I'm, by doing this, I've learned a lot that I want to share with everybody. So this one is on excuses. Now, about halfway through the program, I texted a good friend of mine, Stacy, and she had done it before. And I'm like, I just see excuses everywhere doing this because it's really easy to make an excuse not to stick to your diet, not to work out. And when you have to challenge yourself to do that, otherwise you get reset back to the beginning, you really do see people just with excuses all day long. And I saw myself with a lot of excuses. Now, I would usually work out four to five times a week, which for some of you might think that that's amazing, but there would definitely be days where I'd be like, oh, I just don't feel like doing it. I don't feel like this, or I got in late, or, you know, hey, I, you know, it's a long day. I'm gonna eat that dessert or have that drink, whatever it was. I was making excuses that would end up tripping me up to ultimately hitting my true goals. And so now it's funny, I see them everywhere and I'm able to pinpoint an excuse pretty quickly. So an excuse really looks like, you know, somebody's reasoning for not being able to hit their potential. So an example of that for me in 75 hard was, well, you know, I travel every week. What do I do? Well, you know what? Last night I had to wake up at 3 a.m. to do a 45 minute walk outside in a hotel parking lot. Well lit, of course, to get my workout in before I, you know, had to get aboard a plane. Now, some of you are thinking that's crazy. You know what? I can understand that. And I'm not going to judge you for that comment, but by doing it, I feel a million times better. If I've got to travel all day and I can get up and stretch my legs, it's three o'clock in the morning in Phoenix, it's 6 a.m. at home. It's not that big of a deal. And I can sleep on an airplane. So when you start seeing, you know, excuses for things like, oh, we just didn't get to that. Oh, I just didn't call that client back. I didn't have time to do the quote. You have to really ask yourself, like, what's the excuse? Well, what were you doing instead? Why couldn't you do it? Did you talk to somebody? Did you, you know, like there's 700 ways to be a person of honor and there's 700 ways to still, if you, if you set out to do it, to get it done. And what we see in a lot of agencies is excuses come out because there is no true commitment to getting some things done. It's if I have time, well, we'll see. Well, the phone's here, all the things start coming out. And we like to say, you know, excuses are a problem because you're just describing the water while someone's drowning. Well, this, that, and the next thing, no one's got a plan. When you do 75 hard, you start seeing that there's a plan to tackle anything. And if I don't have a plan, I won't get through those activities and I'll let myself down. I won't hit my potential. So when you're thinking about hearing people's excuses, I want you to think, do they have a plan? The answer is no, because there have been plenty of times where my plan got screwed up and I had to think on my feet and go to plan A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Um, I'm calling it my hospitality hikes now. I have definitely walked with a 30 pound backpack across an airport for 45 minutes just for fun. Well, fun or hitting the goal. But the idea is, is that you have to see these excuses and identify it's an excuse if the person doesn't have a plan. And it's different if they're asking you for help with a plan, but if people catch, you catch somebody in something and they're not doing it, it's an excuse. So that's our tip for today is get rid of excuses, see the excuses for what they are, call them out on it and say, how are we going to get back here and get to creating the plan? Hey everyone. So you're listening all about how not to become the next blockbuster, which I hope is resonating with you. And one step in doing that is setting growth goals for your agency. I see a lot of agencies that just don't set goals because it's uncomfortable. You're not sure how to track it. What if you lose? Who's going to pay attention to it? And that's the thing we all have to kind of get through and get away from because goals are incredibly important. One, to celebrate and two, to understand what's working and what's not working. And many agency owners never set goals, so they're not sure where to start. And that's what we have with this process pack. For $200, you can go ahead and get how to set your goals. There's a calculator that we use that says, hey, this is where you are, this is where you wanna be with retention and rate increases, this is what we need to do. And then how to roll them out to your team, how to incentivize your team to embrace goals, what to expect as you push your team to be more goal oriented. But now is a great time to do this as we head towards the end of the year, what time other than now to start just getting everyone used to goals? It's right now, let's do it. Let's not become blockbuster, right? So check out our agency process pack all about how to set those goals and you know we would love for you to check out our other process packs as well until then
Go get your goals going, guys. Don't become Blockbuster. We'll see you soon.